So I'm going to start with my neighbor. This I'm just showing. Um, 2001, I made this uh, artwork um, called Buddha, uh, which was the um, this nine foot tall uh, wooden work uh, that's consisting of 27 parts of wood uh, that's attached together like a children's um, wood toy. Um, without any screws, um, you can just put, put it together and take it apart. And in this way, I was thinking, I wanted to make an artwork based on something that's happening in the world. And at that time, um, Taliban had destroyed the Buddha figure in Afghanistan. And then I was thinking, I would like to make a Buddha that's portable, where you can bring it and then put it together, and then pray, and then take it apart and bring it somewhere else. And in some ways, I had, this was the first time to make a really large work, which gave me about like um, four to six months to work on, and it was very intensive, hard work. And I enjoyed the process very much, since my work then became very physical. Uh, you know, like I would use all my, my whole body to make something, and it gave me such a tremendous tr pleasure uh, that I started thinking, I would like to do a large project um, after this. Then, um, then the, the real thing starts, my neighbor. Um, I am born in Hiroshima, and at 2005, I was given this opportunity to, to, to exhibit my work at the Hiroshima City Museum of Contemporary Art. And 2005 was the 60th anniversary of the atomic bomb. And when they asked me, oh, you should do a show about Hiroshima, uh, then I was uh, very puzzled. Um, because I'm from Hiroshima, at the same time, I have been living in the U.S. for 16, 17 years at the time. So I was thinking, how can I talk about how we remember about the atomic bombing for 60th anniversary? Um, in the original inspiration, um, somehow through the identity issues that I had been dealing with before, uh, I came up with this phrase, elephants never forget, to talk about the atomic bombing and the remembrance of that. Uh, because, in some ways, I've been living in the U.S. for 17 years, that elephants never forget was the, was the sentence that came to me naturally, without thinking about it. And then, I, if I ask this, do you know elephants never forget to Japanese people? They would not know. So in some ways, I wanted to use um, the part of my identity that's, that's been, that's, that's sort of like a semi-American, to, to talk about something that's Japanese. Um, so, I, I wanted to use the elephants as a symbol of remembrance. And the elephants were, was famous in, in India, so in 2005, right before I, I made the elephant work, I went to India. I went to southern India, starting from Tribandam, Kolam, and all these places. And this was based on the idea of I'm going to look for elephant in India through word of mouth. So as soon as I got to Trivandrum, I started asking people, where do you think I can find elephants? Since I knew that the southern India was famous for elephants, uh, people told me, oh, here and there, here and there. Uh, people told me, like, Kumule, the K-U-M-L-Y, has this, like, nice uh, safari where you can take a ship and they take you around this, like, big, lake where they have all these animals and elephants there. So I went to all these places, you know, like enjoying India, like eating nice food, and then also enjoying the scenery and the culture, and, and I had a fantastic time. And by the time I got to Kumle, um, I did this like a safari boat trip, and all I saw was this like small squirrel type of thing, really far away, and I saw no elephants whatsoever throughout the whole trip, and, and I was very disappointed. And I only had five days left, and I was thinking, I have to see elephants. I came to India all the way from New York, or Hiroshima, um, to, 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 to see the elephants to make it into my work. And then I asked another person, like, where can I see elephants? And they told me, oh, you should go to Murumale. Um, there's a 
safari park there, which is like the largest safari park in, in southern India, um, where they have like eight uh, hundreds of hundreds of elephants. So it took me like two, three days to travel again. Like on the way, I, I enjoyed a lot of places and and the food and everything. And finally, I went to Mudumalai. Um, when I went to Mudumalai, I came to this big safari place, and I was so excited. And I was like, Ah, oh, where can I see elephants? And, and the guy who was working there told me, the elephants is not in season. <laughs> and it's not open for the public. And then I was very disappointed again because it, it took me almost like a two weeks by, by then to find elephants and I didn't see any. And then the, this final place that I found was out of season for the elephants. So then I started thinking, well, India is actually funky place rather than, than this uptight place. I could do something here. Um, on the way to Mudumalai, I found a lot of things kind of loose and different from um, Western culture. For example, if you get on the line to, to get a ticket for um, the train, you know, I was kind of hesitant because I, I don't speak the language. So I would get on the line, then I'm slow, then three people come in, in front of me, like three like this, and then puts their hands through the, through the sales clerk for the tickets. So if you don't push yourself, like they, they take it over in India. So this is what I learned. <clears throat> so I thought I should get more funky in India. And so I started convincing these people at the safari, you know, I came here all the way from New York, and this is for uh, exhibition in, in Hiroshima. It's very, very important. This is the 60th anniversary of the atomic bombing. And, and this is the elephant that I want to see. I really want to see. I'm a famous artist, and like I, I said everything that I could say to, to make it happen. Uh, and, and what really triggered them to say okay was that um, finally they asked me, like, how much do you make? And, and I said, I'm a teacher and I make this much. And it's really not that much in the US. However, when you actually calculate it into the money in India, it's tremendous money. So they were like, oh my god, he is a famous artist. Um, they, did, they don't know how little I make here. Um, anyhow, um, so they, they said, OK, maybe you can just go see the, the domestic camp, domestic camp of the elephants. This is where they domesticate the elephants for the elephant rides. Um, they said, you can just see, but no drawings or no pictures. And by then, I made this happen already that I knew that somehow they would allow me to do things. So, so even though they said no drawings or no, no pictures, I brought my drawing pad and the camera. And I also uh, put everything in this bag that has elephant uh, pictures. And as soon as I got there, um, they found me kind of interesting. They were like, oh, you, you're here to see elephants for the museum, blah, blah, blah. And, and I, I said, you know, like I took out my drawing pad and I said, can I just, can I just make one drawing? One, just one drawing. And they said, um, okay, okay, okay. And they allowed me to make one drawing. And this was the time where I concentrated the most just to make it very, very, like, very, very perfect for, 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 for my standard to, to impress these, these people who were working there to let me, to let me draw more. So this was the drawing that I made. And the guys were like, oh, oh, it's very nice. Can I have one? And I said, of course. And then I, I drew another one. And they said, OK, like, I, want, I want one, I want one. So everyone wanted, wanted one. So I started drawing many. Um, and at the end, they even let me take a picture, too. And they liked me so much that even the next day, they asked me to go to another elephant camp. So I, I had like a. Uh, elephant feast, in a way. Uh, it was very interesting to see elephants because, as you see elephants in in uh, in uh, zoo, you don't get the impact of the elephants because when you get really close to elephants, like like really this close, you get frightened because they're very big, and if they glance at you, in some way, in some ways, it freezes you because they're so big that you know that. Even they're gentle looking, they could just smash you into pieces by the one swing of the nose. So in some ways it was very interesting to see this 
this large, large creature with a beautiful body and also the skin that was like a, almost like a tire rubber, you know, like the tire. And I made more drawings and gave them, gave them to some of the people there. And then I came upon with this drawing, which which was which became the, the image for the for the elephant in Hiroshima. So with the drawing and the memory, I went back to Hiroshima. And as soon as I got to Hiroshima, I contacted the local newspaper, which is Chugoku newspaper. Um, and this is the <clears throat> this is the um, the advertisement that I put in the newspaper, asking the citizens of Hiroshima if they would allow me to, to borrow the remainings of the atomic bombing to make it into an elephant, the symbol of remembrance for the museum show. And as soon as I put this ad, I got no phone calls. For one week, two weeks, I had no phone calls. So I started asking friends and family members like if they know anyone uh, or anybody who may have something. Um, by now, um, this is a 60 years after the atomic bombing that most of the people who had remainings of the atomic bombing, they have donated it to the Peace Memorial Museum. So most of the people don't have anything um, at all of the atomic bombing. So that was, that's why it was taking so long. And also, um, I started to um, wonder, like, oh, would I really be able to make the whole elephant with the objects that's remaining of the atomic bombing. Then I was driving in Hiroshima. Um, then I encountered the sign. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, sorry. This is a, here. Here's some of the things that I collected. This is like I asked a, a friend's father um, who had um, his um, aunt uh, dying at, at, at the side of Hiroshima. Uh, when she was 12. So this is a, 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 a little girl's school bag. Um, and also this was the, a metal plate uh, for the gymnasium in Hiroshima, which I went through like some museum curator people and then friends, friends, friends. So I really had to work this like a way to, to, to communicate and talk to people uh, to get things. Then as I was driving in Hiroshima, um, I found a sign uh, that said there is an exhibition of the Hibaku trees um, at, the, at the Botanical Garden in Hiroshima. And Hibaku tree is, as you see, the tree, trees that survived the atomic bombing. Hibaku means a bond. So it's an a bond trees. And I got curious. I said, oh, this would be nice, actually. Would, maybe my elephant would look great with the trees inside. Um, so as I went to the exhibition, they had a lecture there. And the lecturer were, uh, was, um, uh, this is actually my, my assistant, Michael, who helped me with the project. And then the, the next to this person, um, this is the tree doctor, Riki Horiguchi, who is a, a person who takes care of the, all the hibaku trees in Hiroshima. Uh, Hiroshima has like 150 hibaku trees still, and this is a, within the vicinity of like 100 meter. Um, and he daily takes care of them. And in some ways, I found um, his uh, duty or his work as very philosophical. And I was impressed with him. And I started talking to him, and, and I said, you know, like, you know, I, I told him about my project, and I told him I'm making the elephants and. And I really would like some trees in my elephants, and if there's any trees. Uh, so he introduced me to a place where they had this, this, this um, cut trees, uh, which was like a, sort of like rotting at the time, so they had to cut it down. And this was a, in a shrine in, your, in Hiroshima city. And then as we talked more, um, I kind of like found out that maybe like there could be a trimming of the tree like trimming of the existing tree. Uh, so um, Mr. Horiguchi and I had approached by then um, to, to, um, to get the Hiroshima city to, to, to start the next trimming, because the trimming happens often in the summer. Um, 
So as we went to the city council, um, he really helped me on this. He, he had talked um, to them because he knows some of the city council people um, that, that even though